In section 12.6, we'll look at reduction of polar carbon to halogen bonds, uh, in particular carbon halogen sigma bonds. So let's take a molecule, a halogen on it, and we'll treat that with one of those same reagents we've been using, and that's lithium aluminum hydride. Now, if you remember, the way lithium aluminum hydride reacts, it reacts like we have an H minus. So the typical things that you want to ask in a reaction, who has electrons and who wants them, the hydride is the group that has electrons, and then who wants them. So now we look at the rest of our molecule and say, which atom in this molecule is electron deficient? And it would be the, the carbon atom that's bonded to the halogen. So the electrons are gonna go from the hydride to the carbon. And of course, halogens are good leaving groups because they're the conjugate base of a strong acid. So that makes that leave. And what you end up with is the halogen replaced by hydrogen. So since this is a strong nucleophile, this works best with an SN2 mechanism, which means that a primary halogen is better than a secondary halogen, is better than a tertiary halogen for this reaction. We can also apply this idea to other molecules. So for example, we could have an epoxide and treat that first with lithium aluminum hydride and then second with water. And you go ahead and try and figure out what the product of that is going to be and how that mechanism works. So pause the video for a second and try and draw it. So the hydride will come in because the hydride has electrons. The carbon oxygen bond is what wants to break. That's, that carbon is electron deficient or the carbon is who wants electrons. That bond to oxygen will leave giving us the intermediate that needs to be protonated. So here's our new hydrogen that just added. And here's our oxygen, O minus. That O minus needs to be reprotonated. To form our final product, the alcohol. In section 12.7, we'll look at what some of the common oxidizing agents are, and then in the following sections, we'll look at some reactions of them. So the common oxidizing agents typically contain oxygen-oxygen bonds or oxygen-metal bonds. So examples of the oxygen-oxygen bonds would be things like oxygen, ozone, hydrogen peroxide, or proxy acids. And proxy acids Proxy acids are similar to carboxylic acids, except after our carbonyl, typically we would have an OH, that would make it a carboxylic acid. But to make it a peroxy acid, we have our carbonyl, then an oxygen to oxygen bond, and then the hydrogen. And there's a common proxy acid that we'll end up seeing used in this chapter a lot. Which is this one, which is metachloroperoxybenzoic acid. or for short, we'll write that MCPBA. And then for the metals, typically the metals will either have a chromium six plus compound in it or a manganese seven plus metal. So examples of chromium six plus would be chromium trioxide, CrO3, pyridinium chlorochromate, which we abbreviate PCC. So we have some more complex structures that we're using starting in this chapter. That's pyridine. If I add a proton to it, it makes it charged, and that's pyridinium. And then chlorochromate. It 
has a negative charge, so PCC, pyridinium chlorochromate, has this chromium with six bonds also. And there are still more chromium compounds, like we can have uh, sodium dichromate, Na2Cr2O7. Cr2O7 is that dichromate ion. And a lot of these chromium compounds are used in the presence of strong acid. Things like sulfuric acid. And they make really, really strong oxidizing agents. Now one of the manganese ones is potassium permanganate, KMnO4. MnO4- minus is the permanganate ion. And then there are a couple of others that are different that we're going to see this chapter. Things like OSO4, which is osmium tetroxide. And silver oxide. So these are all compounds that are easily reduced, which makes them oxidize other molecules. So these are things that want to be reduced, and so it makes them good oxidizing agents.